Christ, yesterday and today. The, the beginning, beginning and, and the end. Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To, to him be glory and power, and power through every age and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvellous light. May we, and all Christ's people, shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and our unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us, us and help us. us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us, us and help us. us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us, us and, and help us. us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Oh, 
silence we pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every na nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory be, be to, to thee, thee O Lord. Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. 
This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to thee, thee o, o Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we still have in a box in the loft here at the rectory some of the books that we used to read to Cridwen and Owain when they were well, very small. One of them was a particularly delightful book entitled Can't You Sleep, Little Bear? Little Bear's problem is that he's scared of the dark. Big Bear provides bigger and bigger and shinier lanterns, but nothing helps. Well, Little Bear knows that outside the cave there is an awful lot of darkness, and the lanterns, it seems, make no difference. So eventually, Big Bear takes an incredibly tired Little Bear outside to look up at the sky and face his fears. When Little Bear sees the moon and the stars shining far above, splitting the sheer darkness, he is at last able to give in and fall asleep. Well, just like Little Bear, it's natural for many people to be afraid of the dark. But Matthew's story of the resurrection that we've just heard tells us about people who are afraid not of the dark, but it would seem of the light. Jesus' disciples had lived through a roller coaster of emotions that first holy week. They've been carried along by the cheering crowds of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, waving their palm branches and shouting Hosanna. They'd spent the festival vigilant in the face of the risk that Jesus was facing from authorities, both Jewish and Roman. They had experienced the intimacy of eating and drinking with him that last Passover meal in the upper room, and then the fear, shame, despair and grief at Jesus' arrest in the dark Garden of Gethsemane, the trial and the horrific death. In those circumstances, the deadness of grief seems welcome for it seems to offer the disciples a chance to retreat into the dark, to become numb, to stop feeling for a while. The darkness provides them with a certain bleak peace. So those two women called Mary go very early to the tomb. They know it's going to be guarded, it will be secure. They go to grieve. Light might be dawning across the world, but there's darkness in their hearts. And perhaps there is comfort in that too. They're going through the traditional morning rituals. Now that is all over, and the adventure of travelling with Jesus has come to an end. They can do what the women of their time do, weep for the dead and tend to the living. They are sad, of course, devastated, but they are no longer afraid. When the worst you fear has happened, 
then there is no more reason to be afraid. So it's not the darkness that scares them out of their wits, as it did with Little Bear, but the light. The light from two figures who ought not to be there. One is from another world, an angel. Someone who should not exist in the real world of a Jerusalem garden. And the other one should be dead. Both break into the darkness of grief and despair with a searing white light. A searing white light of hope and joy. And the women are afraid. Grief, they understood. It has its rituals. It has its expectations. They know what to expect. But this is something quite new. This unexpected joy, this painfully bright light, this is something terrifying. In their grief, the walk to the tomb has been long and slow. Now all is movement. They run from the angel and the empty tomb, not knowing whether to scream with fear or sing with joy. And as they do so, they run headlong into Jesus. So little wonder that they fall at his feet that first Easter Sunday. And his words to them echoed the message given by the angel earlier. Do not be afraid. Go and tell. Each of the Gospel writers tells the story of the Resurrection in a distinctive way. None of the Gospels attempt to tell us what happened to Jesus between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. That remains a mystery. Instead, the Gospel writers show us the effect of the Resurrection on those who were there. And Matthew's account, which we've heard, describes an earthquake and an angel-like lightning. But Matthew is not alone in describing the first reaction of those who experienced the resurrection as one of fear. As we sing Alleluia this Easter Sunday, it's probably not fear that we're feeling. But perhaps in our present circumstances here in the UK and across the world, there ought to be an element of it. The women at the tomb were right to be afraid. A bright light had pierced the gloom of the world and nothing would be the same again. Dark death had been overcome. All the old, comfortable certainties that they knew had failed. The world had been turned upside down. And there were consequences. No returning to the safety of domesticity for the two Marys, but a commission to spread the news. And there's no safety for us either, both in the pandemic that we're living through, but also because of the light. If the light pierces through our lives and into our hearts this day, but a life committed to the truth. Perhaps we should be more afraid in order to hear the risen Jesus speaking to us. Do not be afraid. Go and tell this Easter Sunday and always. Amen. Those of you who were present just a couple of months ago now at the uh, confirmation in All Saints will remember that we had a baptism, that there were 18 young people confirmed by Bishop Peter Price. During that service, we renewed our baptismal vows. 
Some of you will also remember Bishop Peter ensuring that as everyone else got sprinkled with holy water, uh, the rector got doused in holy water at Episcopal hands. One of the traditions on Easter Sunday is to renew our baptismal vows, and so we do that now. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore I ask, my brothers and sisters, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I, I reject, reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I, I renounce, renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I, I repent, repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I, I turn, turn to, to Christ. Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I, I submit, submit to, to Christ. Christ. Do you come to Christ the way, the truth and the life? I, I come, come to, to Christ. Christ. Brothers and sisters, I ask you now to make the profession of Christian faith into which you were baptised and in which you live and grow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? And makes Christ known in the world. We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our, our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so, as we sit or kneel wherever we are gathered, let us pray. The words, Jesus, Lord of life, please respond, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nation. We pray in particular for the World Health Organization at this time, for the international efforts in the search for a vaccine against COVID-19. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. <clears throat> Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry. We remember all who are refugees, those who are homeless, those in our own society and communities who do not know where the next meal is coming from, and nourish each one of us with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. We pray in particular for the people and city of Jerusalem, for the small community still inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, for this Diocese of Southwark, and for Christopher, our Bishop. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. us. Jesus, 
the resurrection and the life. We give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you, especially the recently departed, including all who have died in the past days from COVID-19. All those whose names are known to us, for Alfie Horton, Olive Rowett, Jean Bryan and Barbara Dakin, and all whose anniversary falls about now, including Honor Lobley, Gordon Bell Jr, David Robbins and Betty Fisher. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen, risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Alleluia! The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia! My brothers and sisters, the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And, and with, with thy, thy spirit. spirit. Alleluia! We share as best we can in our own homes a sign of Christ's peace. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, so, with you. So. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the power of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation <clears throat> sing forever the hymn of your glory.
Before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again. Lord of all life. Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with blessed Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 Rejoicing in the power of the resurrection, as our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live for ever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. 
Jesus, Jesus Lamb, Lamb of God, have, have mercy on us. us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. <coughs> Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I couldn't help but put in the rubric, please be seated for the notices, the likelihood is, I'm aware, in your own homes, you probably are seated already. Uh, the notices are fairly brief, except to say uh, thank you for all of those who have been joining in, particularly through Holy Week. Virtually, digitally, it's been a joy and a delight to share this Holy Week with you. Um, this coming week I will be off duty, obviously not going anywhere, but off duty, so there will be no Masses on Tuesday or Thursday. Um, however, there is a small group of uh, laity from the congregation who have agreed to lead morning prayer and Compline, uh, so they will take place as normal at 8.30 and 9 o'clock, uh, be live streamed from their homes um, and will be then available on Facebook and YouTube. Please do keep in your prayers, uh, she was mentioned in the intercessions, uh, Barbara Dacum, um, a member of our Thursday morning congregation who sadly died on Good Friday. Please keep her and her family in your prayers. Uh, the setting we used today was written by Paul Booth, uh, formerly director of music at Bangor Cathedral. He wrote it as a congregational setting for the cathedral when the choir was absent. Um, and if you listened to Archbishop Justin's radio broadcast, his Eucharist this morning from Lambeth Palace, you'll know that uh, the hymn at the end was the traditional Easter hymn, Thine Be the Glory. It was sung by a virtual choir 
of uh, about 150 from their different homes, recorded and sent in. The organist was Graham Eccles, Paul Booth's predecessor as director of music. So in, in a way it's been a delight to be able to share musically this Easter with uh, two of my former uh, directors of music uh, at Bangor. And we do so in a moment by singing that same hymn, Thine Be the Glory. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this Easter and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. 